throughout all of the true crime cases that I have covered on this channel, let alone all of the stories I have come across by either listening to podcasts, watching TV, or reading a book, there is one case that has always stuck with me in the back of my head as something so incredibly twisted and sick that I had trouble understanding how a human being could be responsible for such a truly evil act. I figured it was genuinely a hoax or creepypasta meant to scare and mentally scar anyone who came across it, until I found out that it not only was real, but that it is still an ongoing story to this day. The story that I am talking about is that of Katarzyna Zawada, and how some say that she met with a fate much worse than death. Katarzyna Zawada was by many accounts a shy, yet friendly and nice person to both her friends and strangers. She was also said to keep a lot of her emotions close to the chest, as she didn't want to overwhelm or feel like she was burdening those close to her with her inner struggles. Due to this, she was often seen as a withdrawn person from both social events as well as with her mother. In 1998, Katarzyna had been attending university in nearby Krakow, Poland, where she was studying religion. This was a change in what she originally was going to major in, as she started her university life with the goal of pursuing psychology. But that all changed after the death of her father, which had a major impact on her life. And for the prior two years, she was struggling with depression because of this. She had been seeing a psychiatrist and would frequently meet with her mother during those sessions. It was said that after the death of her father, Katarzyna became awfully close to her mother and the two would often help each other cope with the loss in their family. The sessions with her psychiatrist are exactly the reason that Katarzyna's mother knew something was wrong when on November 12th, 1998, Katarzyna fell to meet her mother for her appointment. Worried, her mother went to the police to alert them of her missing daughter, but was told by them that she should simply wait before getting law enforcement involved. They told her that because of her age, she was more than likely with friends or simply forgot about her appointment and that she was more than likely perfectly fine. Not liking what she was told by police, Katarzyna's mother began searching for her daughter, but with no luck. There was little she could do, and for all purposes, it appeared that Katarzyna vanished without a trace. Some began to wonder if she simply disappeared on her own accord to get away from everyone. Others feared that due to her depression that she may have taken drastic actions as a result. The wonders and worries of those closer to her could do nothing but fill the empty space that her absence left in their lives. And nearly two months later, a discovery would be made that would not only horrify the country of Poland, but ignite an investigation that is still ongoing to this day. Today's video is sponsored by Indel. If there is one thing that I feel most of us can agree with, it's that we feel some levels of stress or anxiousness more than we would like. I myself have suffered with anxiety so bad that it has actually delayed uploads to this channel due to me getting in my own head and doubting myself as well as having a lot of trouble focusing. A lot of that changed once I started using Endel. Endel is an app that combines what we know about stress and anxiety and combines it with cutting edge technology. The ending results are personalized soundscapes that help you relax, focus, and even sleep. Using an AI that takes into account things like your surroundings, the weather, and even your own heart rate to create a soundscape that would best help you in the moment. And it really does work. I no longer search Spotify or YouTube looking for calming, random music that barely helps me focus on the task at hand. Indel is also backed by neuroscience studies that actually proves that Indel is the fastest and most consistent focus for a user. So if you need help focusing, relaxing, or sleeping, click the link below in the description. The first 100 people to download Indel using my link in the description below will get a free week of audio experiences. So try Indel today to relax your mind.
On January 6, 1999, just a few days into the new year, a tugboat named the Elk was coasting on the Vistula River when they noticed something out of place floating in the water. Attempting to drive past it, the unknown debris were swept under the tugboat and became lodged in the propeller. When the crew made their way to the latch to remove whatever was causing the jam, they were immediately met with both a very foul smell and that was quickly followed by the sight of something straight out of a horror movie. What was quickly pulled out of the propeller was long and somewhat stretchy. Thinking that these were the remains of some type of animal, any notion of that being the case was immediately thrown out when what they pulled out of the propeller was something with a human ear attached to it. Disgusted and frightened, the crew of the Elk alerted the captain and as the entire crew began taking in what they were looking at, they were able to tell that it appeared to be the remains of a human. But instead of seeing any blood or bones, all that seemed to be there was simply skin. Yet, it wasn't natural looking and appeared to have been actually sewn back together. What the crew of the Elk were looking at was a literal skin suit. The crew of the Elk alerted police and an investigation quickly followed as this was something that many couldn't wrap their heads around. Nobody thought that a person or whoever was responsible for this could actually live among the public and many hoped that the nature of the skin was due to some type of decomposition. Yet, as much as nobody wanted to face the facts that this was indeed a human skin suit, there was little that could be offered as any other means of an explanation. A few days later, on January 14, 1999, a right leg and several pieces of clothing were found washed up on the shore of the same river where the crew of the Elk made their haunting discovery. When police examined those remains as well as what was discovered on the tugboat, they were able to determine that they belonged to the same person and that the victim was female. What was unknown at the time was the identity of who met with this horrible fate. Shortly after the investigation began, the Polish authorities called in investigators and other experts as well as consulted with the FBI to aid in both identifying the victim but as well as establish some type of profile for whoever could be responsible. Within a few weeks of the discovery of the remains, it was learned through DNA testing that the skin belonged to Katarzyna. The country of Poland was shocked to learn that such a young woman could have met with such a brutal end and the pressure that was on law enforcement to catch whoever was responsible was mounting more and more by the day. In the following months, little progress had actually been made with the investigation, but the FBI was able to give a profile of the attacker. It was stated from them that the killer was male who was a sadist, enjoyed harassing women, and that he was likely to have a criminal record. And judging by the wounds on the remains, that he more than likely knew some sort of self-defense, and that he could have used this knowledge to incapacitate Katarzyna. Judging from the wounds that could be seen, it was determined that Katarzyna was first beaten and then stabbed in the neck, armpits, and groin. Her official cause of death was ruled as blood loss, but before she had bled out, it was also ruled that she had her organs removed while she was still alive. From the shock of this, it was assumed that she passed out and shortly after succumbed to the blood loss. And after she died, her skin was then flayed and then her skin was then re-sewn to make the suit that was later found by the tugboat. And as truly horrific as that is to hear, a few months later, a similar crime was reported to police, and many began to fear that they were dealing with someone who wasn't going to stop. of 1999, the forensic medical unit in Krakow received the remains of a man with a severed and scalped head. 
It was quickly determined that the son of the victim was responsible, a man by the name of Vladimir. Investigators had enough to charge him in the death of his father, but naturally, given how something incredibly similar happened to Katarzyna, he was made a suspect given that he actually wore his father's face as a mask. As disturbing as that is to imagine, it unfortunately actually happened. When police looked into Vladimir, they were surprised to learn that he claimed no responsibility for what happened to Katarzyna, and that what he did to his father was from deep-seated anger at him throughout his life, and that he meant for the crime to be a work of art, showing how cruel humans can be to one another with no worry of remorse. He even told authorities that he wore his father's mask and pretended to be him. And as shocked as police were to learn this, they were unable to make any solid connections with Vladimir to Katarzyna. Vladimir was arrested for the crimes against his father and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. But as for the case of Katarzyna, it continued to remain in limbo for years following. Police found no other skin suits in the area and were growing more concerned every year that whoever was responsible had gotten away with a crime that many think is too evil for a person to come up with in their own mind. As the case continued to stall and the years grew longer since the crime, advancements in both law enforcement and forensics helped to start to paint an even brighter picture on the mystery surrounding this case. One of the biggest being that whoever did this clearly didn't stop just at Katarzyna. Police looked into current inmates to see if they matched the criteria that the FBI profile gave them, and as the years had passed, that criteria became even more detailed, such as whoever committed the crime was a person who was skilled with a knife, and even more so, knew how to precisely flay something, claiming that the attacker was a skilled hunter, or at the very least, a butcher. In 2016, the theory that the attacker was skilled in self-defense was still in circulation with authorities and that he was incredibly knowledgeable in an undisclosed form of martial arts. The police went even further and stated that they could prove Katarzyna had been brutally tortured before her death and that she could have been kept alive for several days during this time. I have seen conflicting reports that state that she could have been kept alive for three to four days after her disappearance, all the way to a full month. For the next year, the case continued in a state of no arrest, but those assigned to it worked day after day to secure any lead that they could come across. That seemed to finally pay off when on October 4th, 2017, police made an arrest after 19 years since the crime originally happened. Police arrested Robert Janchevsky. The arrest came after years of having him on police radar. It was said that he had been an unnamed suspect since 1999, and after investigators searched his apartment, they were able to find blood in both his bathroom and on his bed frame. If that blood belonged to Katarzyna, Robert, or someone else entirely is unknown, as police are keeping a lot of information private since the investigation is still ongoing. What is known is that Robert fits the profile made by the FBI pretty well. Robert was a trained martial artist. He knew Katarzyna. He was frequently seen visiting her grave throughout the years. He had a history of both harassment and assault against women, and he was known to have a short temper. What is even more eye-catching is that in the past, he had actually worked at a dissecting lab where he handled human remains. In addition to this, he also worked at a zoology institute, and while he was employed there, he was responsible for skinning various animals and preparing them. He actually worked there for several years, but was fired due to him killing all of the institute's rabbits in what was said to be a fit of rage, which has been something that Robert himself has been unable to explain, as he claims that he was so angry that he couldn't recall anything. The fact that Robert matches a lot of the profile is eye-catching, but it still wouldn't be enough to charge someone with a crime. 
The reason Robert was arrested was due to Robert's friend giving the police a letter that Robert had written him a few weeks prior that contained information about the case that wasn't made aware to the public. From what I read about the letter, according to police, the information in that letter has been a closely guarded secret since the start of the investigation, and it would be something only someone who either played a part in the crime or was directly involved would know. Because of this, Robert Janjewski has been charged with the murder of Katarzyna Zawada and is still being held in custody as more evidence is gathered. Robert himself states that he is innocent and has accused everything being a complete lie and saying that the police are simply trying to pin this on someone. He also claims that the letter doesn't even exist and that it was made up by the police to get a warrant to arrest him. There have been numerous theories on this case, some not even involving Robert. There were, of course, those who came out and took blame for the crime simply to try to get some kind of spotlight attention, but were quickly ruled out as the only information they could give was what consisted of being in the newspapers at that time. There were the religious views that Katarzyna was used as some type of sacrifice, and that because of it being carried out, it led to her attackers never being caught due to it being a success. And I came across one where some said that the killer was inspired by the movie The Silence of the Lambs, and as a result, wanted to recreate this as best they could. I think that due to the horrific way in which Katarzyna died has created this morbid fascination with her case. It is not often you read about something that sounds like it came out of a horror movie, for it to then happen in real life and then go unsolved for nearly two decades. The manner in which Katarzyna met her end was something that nobody should ever have to experience, and I myself was having actual nightmares from researching this topic. It's something that I figured I would never cover since not only is it truly one of the most, if not the most, disturbing case I have ever come across, but I also figured YouTube would restrict the hell out of this video, again due to the very nature of what was involved here. And I didn't even mention everything that happened to her. Some of the torture that this young woman went through is stuff better left unsaid. And if you really want to read about it, then Google is at your disposal. But I will warn you, the pictures and the material that you will read is not something I would suggest anyone go check out. But again, I know some of you will. To end this, I wanted to add my own theory on this whole matter. I think that whoever is responsible for what happened, whether it be Robert or Vladimir or someone else we don't even know at this time, I think that whoever did this, this was absolutely not their first time. And I would argue that it wasn't their last. Just because no remains or other stories like this occurred in the area doesn't mean they didn't happen. Katarzyna was labeled as a missing person for almost two months before her remains were found. Who's to say that those other missing people were not similar victims both before and since? The care and complexity it takes to do what this person did isn't just something we read about as a one-off type of thing. It is typically something that a person can't seem to control. But those are just my thoughts on this case. I haven't really done one of these outros in a while, and honestly, I miss doing these, but I felt they were boring since I kind of just always said the same thing every single time. But I decided to do one now. So as always, let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments, and of course, the words that I mispronounced in the video this time. If you're not a subscriber yet, then why not hit that big red subscribe button and join the Kadaddy Army? And while I'm shamelessly self-promoting, hit that notification bell while you're at it. And I will see all of you in the next video. Stay safe out there, friends. Good night.